Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Stu Kirker, W8SDK. And uh, he has a question with, uh, about an RFI uh, in his Jeep Wrangler. Now, I know what he's talking about because I've got a Jeep Wrangler too. It's a 2018. His might be a little newer. He says, I recently installed a set of LED headlights in my Jeep Wrangler. I don't blame you. The stock ones are pretty dim. When using the lights in my vehicle, my Kenwood TMD710 becomes unusable because of broadband RF noise, okay? The RF interference is so high that it completely shuts down my receiver. I have the detachable head mounted next to the base on my dashboard approximately 18 to 24 inches apart. I have attached ferrite chokes on both ends of the line connecting the base to the head of the radio. This arrangement did nothing to improve my problem. I would like to filter out the noise from the lights, but do not know where to place additional ferrite chokes to kill the interference. Should I add them to my antenna or my power cables attached to the radio or both? My antenna is mounted on the hood as there is very little metal elsewhere in the vehicle. I've noticed that too. The roof is entirely plastic. Fortunately, the roll bars are high strength steel. But I haven't figured out how to attach an antenna there yet. I may have to do just exactly uh, what you did. Before we jump into uh, addressing uh, Steve's um, or Stu's question, uh, I would like to give a special thanks to Danny ZL3NZL uh, from New Zealand, who is one of my most recent new patrons on Patreon. You too can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og and picking a method there that works best for you. Now let's take a look at this question. Okay, that the front of the Jeep are the headlights, and they've got 12 volts going to them, and probably the other half somewhere in this cable here is um, attached to the chassis. This is the uh, symbol for chassis connection as opposed to ground, which is actually earth. Okay, so what the problem is is that LEDs are current-driven devices. Now, one way you can do it with a voltage source is to put a current-limiting resistor and then put the um, LED in here, okay, and then back. And this resistor right here limits the current that flows into this. Well, now you got a problem, okay. More power is being... Um, used up in the resistor than is used up in the diode. Some of these LEDs have about 3.1 volts across them, which means if you come off of, of 12, you've got um, about 6.9, no, 7.9 volts across the resistor. Okay, so you're going to lose more heat here. So, the way modern LEDs work, is they have what's called a current driver. The symbol for a current driver is this. Now what this does, if you send this to a load out here, it does not matter what the load is, the current will be a constant. Okay? And it's easy to build circuits that do this. If this voltage is six volts, and you get 2 amp, let's say it's a 2 amp constant. You put six, uh, 6 volts there, if you put a high resistance, you'll get 100 volts. If you put a low resistance, you'll get a fraction of a volt, but it will always stay 2 amps. And this is how modern LEDs are built. They've got a small circuit, usually in the base of the bulb. You know, the thing looks like the usual Edison thing and then you've got the bulb out here, 
inside this, right at the bottom, right in here, is a little circuit board. And it has something that puts current, and you've usually got a bunch of these in series out here. I believe some of the 100-watt uh, lamps have like 70 of these in series. Now, what this does is it feeds the right amount of current. Now, it doesn't matter within limits how many of these you put in series because the same current will flow through them all, okay? And that amount of current is dictated by the, uh, the little circuit here. Now, this is the reason why sometimes when you turn on an LED bulb, it takes a second, and then suddenly it's bright. It's because it takes a second to charge up the capacitors that are in this little tiny circuit right here. Okay, and then they're on. Now, they've tried to fix it so that, like this bulb right here, this bulb right here is an LED but it comes on almost instantly. But if you were to look at it, and you can't do this with an incandescent bulb. You see in here are the LEDs, which are those long yellow things. Note the weird kind of uh, top on here, a little like a lump. It's very different from the regular bulbs, and then right down here in the bottom, this little bottom part right here, if we were to take this apart, you could see the uh, current device that provides the correct amount of current uh, to those. Now sometimes you may notice that there's some sort of a you know, your printer turns on and so all the lights dim, but the LED lights don't limb, the dim so much. That's because there, as long as this thing has enough voltage here to feed it enough current to keep this current going, they'll keep going at the same brightness, at the same brightness, because the brightness is determined by the current, not the voltage. Okay, now let's look at this LED uh, headlamp here. And I'm kind of curious where you got them because I think I might like to replace mine too with better headlamps. So you've got a 12 volt lead here. In the back here is your little device that is creating enough current. Now the way these things work, if it's digital, it'll keep providing a waveform to a capacitor to keep this voltage up right. And then there's a device in here that controls the current, okay, to make sure that it's the right current. And what this thing will do is pulse modulate this so that it gives the right current. So you, you've got a, uh, it takes much less current to run this. You've got basically a little microprocessor in here or a little, it's not really what you need a microprocessor for. It's just a very small uh, chip. Is pulse modulating this, but that pulse modulation is a square wave. And that square wave can create RF harmonics. Now, how do they radiate? Well, the outside of this is probably grounded, but this lead is probably not. Um, in fact, it's at 12 volts. But the thing is that you've got this little pulse generator in here, and this wire right here is your antenna for this thing, okay? Now, where do you put your ferrite beads? Okay, you put them right here. Okay, over that. Put them right there. And that will probably help you. Another thing you can do is to get uh, an electrolytic capacitor that's um, rated at uh, 20 volts or something like that, an electrolytic capacitor, and put it between plus and minus just right in here. 
okay? Now what that will do, it will cause the RF to short to ground, okay? So you would put an electrolytic capacitor here and then put in the 0 0.1 microfarad um, or 0 0.1 nanofarad uh, capacitor for the high RF uh, next to this, okay? That's what's often done. This right here should greatly eliminate the problems of the harmonics of these square waves from getting into your radio. And you want to kill that radiation right there at the entrance to the, uh, the bulb, okay? I mean, it's, you can't take the bulb apart, but you can put the ferrite beads here. And you can, if you want, if you want, go ahead and install this capacitor. This should not affect the functioning of the uh, lights. Okay, so there you go. So Dave, I hope that answers the question there and I hope it works for you. I'm gonna have to go looking for some LED lights for my 2018 Jeep Wrangler because I don't like, uh, they're too dim at night and I'm getting older and I'd like more light. So if I could get some real good bulbs in there, that would be very good for me. So thank you for pointing out that those exist. Those of you who have gotten this far in this video, you probably really like this channel. Please subscribe and click like. And also you can support this channel by going to decastlercom support and looking for a way that works for you. Until we next meet, 73.